Hello everyone, welcome and God bless you. What an amazing, incredible day of life this is. Let us know where you're watching from. We appreciate you. Uh, let's make sure that we're live here on Facebook. God bless you all. In fact, I'm so excited about today. I have a very special guest with me, uh, DeMonte Edmonds, and I know that God's going to do amazing, incredible things. God is just up to something really big this season, you guys. In fact, uh, the Lord's been showing me in my own life, and I want to encourage you with this, that uh, your yes in the season, there's a suddenly on your yes in the season, there's a, there's a spirit of expectation and there's an anticipation in the spirit, uh, but also there's an acceleration on your yes in this season. Uh, so it's amazing. In fact, like I said, I'm seeing it in my own life. Again, let us know where you're watching from. Hello, Shauna. Welcome and God bless you. Uh, we appreciate you stopping by. And so, uh, DeMonte, thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here on Voices of Hope today and to share hope with the listeners and watchers. Amen. Amen. Well, we're going to go ahead and get ready to get started here. But first, I want to start the broadcast with the Lord's Prayer as we do every single time. We're going to go ahead and do that first, and then we're going to go ahead and jump right in. So our Father, which art in heaven, yes. hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen and amen. amen god bless you all hello sherry god bless you welcome and welcome so demonte thank you again we appreciate you uh, wow this has been an incredible season amen yes it's been a different year for many it's been very challenging but for many the lord told me very early on that it would be a goshen for those that were faithful uh those that were walking with him and those that would follow his voice and for us and some of in our circle this has been one of the best years where we've seen the promises of God manifest. And so we're not just looking to the outside in the media, we're looking to the true report from heaven. Amen, amen. You know what, and I'll, I'll um, let you introduce yourself in just a second in your ministry, but I just wanna add to what you're just saying. In fact, this has been my best year, I think ever, with what God's doing in my life, just the expansion, just, just blessings in every single area of my life. And so, you know, I started to feel kind of guilty when people were, you know, I knew that people were losing and a lot of people were suffering and I was like, and I felt bad about it. And the Lord said, do not ever apologize for my goodness on your life because I'm going to use your life as an example of my goodness. And so I was like, okay, all right, here we go. So I always just share the amazing things that God's doing in this season. It's just phenomenal. Amen. And, you know, I think about Joseph, you know, he was sent down into Egypt and he prospered. He went from the, uh, from the pit to the palace while his, his family, his loved ones and others back in Canaan land, back in other parts of what is now Palestine and Israel, they were in famine, they were in drought, they were really going through, they actually had to send, um, his dad had to send his brothers down to Egypt and that's not a overnight journey, That's they couldn't get on an airplane or a train, that's a long journey. So they were really in a rough place. And so I believe God is positioning many believers that are really walking with him hand in hand in positions of prominence, of influence, of blessing, and of promise so that we can reach out and grab the hands of those uh, to follow behind us and to come with us and to help them not just come along to a place of prosperity, but come into a place of greater intimacy with the Lord, because they're going to look and say, hey, how is God doing that for Dallas? How is God doing that for DeMonte? How is God doing that for this person? And then you can say, listen, I obey God in, in spite of the uh, challenges, in spite of the fears, in spite of the doubts, in spite of the naysayers, in spite of the, the media and the projections, I obey God. And if you do this, God's going to do something great for you as well. As come on, that is exactly what I have been preaching <laughs> this entire season. It's like, you know, and God's given me a, a boldness in this season where I'm like, you know what, God, saints, saints, it is time to put your big girl pants on. It is time to put your big boy pants on. It is time to start moving your feet and doing exactly what God's called you to do because we're full of excuses. In fact, the Lord uh, show, uh, shared with me, he said, Gypsy, what you call procrastination, I call disobedience. And so that's really, you know, the, the word of the Lord this season is that it's time to, to make up our mind and, and really decide whose team are we on and, and start moving our feet uh, and doing kingdom work. Yes, I agree. And you know, one of the things the Lord showed me as well, and there are many people that are frustrated. They're frustrated with life. They're frustrated with their circumstances. They're frustrated with finances. They're frustrated with the, the lack of growth and progress in their ministries. And the Lord said, 
Don't frustrate yourself. Frustrate frustration. When you obey God, when you follow the word, when you speak the word, when you do what the word says, the Bible says, being a doer of the word, you actually frustrate frustration. Those are just where there's frustration and tension begin to go away and you experience joy. There are many people frustrated because they're walking in disobedience. That's right. Yes. Uh, one thing that I see with the, the early church in the book of Acts, they had signs, they had wonder, wonders and they had miracles. But several places it says they were in the comfort of the Holy Spirit and they were filled with joy. When you begin to do something for Jesus, when you begin to do something for God, and you do it with the right heart and the right motives. You get a reward that's called joy. There's Amen. Joyless Christians because they're not doing anything. So we need to get busy. We need to put our hands to the plow. I struggled with procrastination for years. I won't even get into that. But that was one of my biggest challenges from a kid to to uh, being an a, a adult. And, and really what it is, is some of it's doubt, some of it's anxiety, some of it, sometimes people need inner healing, but we need to get busy for Jesus and he will give us joy. Amen. Amen. Well, before we get too much further, I want for those who may not know you, uh, share a little bit about your ministry and what, what God's currently doing in your life. Wow. So um, I'm Apostle DeMonte Edmonds with Freedom for the Nations. I pastored for about four years and the Lord released us from pastoring and we started Freedom for the Nations and with that, uh, the Lord's taking me into a, a, about 25 countries, sharing the gospel with miracles, signs and wonders. We've seen the blind see, the deaf hear, the lame walk. People lose wow. 30, 40 pounds instantly. Metal disappear from body. All types of miracles, limbs grow. And uh, as well, he's given us opportunity to write books that have been to about 30 nations and help people in their faith and, and prophetic insights. And our ministry has been featured on a number of media outlets from CBN, TBN, Turning Point, God TV, I could just name a number of stations. So he's really given us an international apostolic and prophetic ministry. And one of the main things that we do is uh, cover ministries and help leaders develop into their full potential, into their full maturity. And so I'm excited about what he's done, but I'm more excited about what he's doing next in this season. Yes. Yes. Amen. Me too. I, like I said, this season has just been absolutely incredible. And, you know, at the beginning of the season, the Lord said, you know, my people are going to need to have eyes to see and ears to hear with what I'm doing. We need to keep our you know, focus on him and not get distracted by everything that's in the, that's going on in the natural um, and keep our focus completely on him in the season. And, and really, that's what it's about. And it's really, you know, my ministry, uh, the Lord just recently birthed it to a new level, you know, and, and I'm called to activate, equip and awaken you know, a godly leaders. And really, I feel like I'm evangelizing the church, which sounds strange, but that's really what I, my heart has always been to evangelize the church. And it seems like, you know, uh, this whole, uh, you know, global shaking that's happened in the nation has really is was meant, I believe, to waken up a sleepy church. Um, and so I, I believe the saints are praying now more than ever. And so, yeah, I'm excited about what God's doing. Definitely. And, you know, <laughs> I think we need that rattling. I think about the, the early church again in the book of Acts. They were kind of comfortable at Jerusalem, but it said persecution actually spread them abroad. They actually began to do. Jesus said, you're going to go to uh, Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, the outer part, most parts of the world. And they got so comfortable with the move of God that took place at Jerusalem. They forgot about the rest of that commission and they stayed put. But when persecution came, it says the church was scattered abroad. And so sometimes that that pressure, sometimes uh, these challenges and these things like COVID and even the elections that's taken place kind of applies this pressure that God allows, even uh, uses what the enemy throws at us and uses us for our advantage. The Bible says he causes all things to work for the good of those Amen. that love him. And that's called according to his purpose. So one of the things we can always be working on in any season is our love walk with God. And if we're working on our love walk with God, all of those challenges and brick walls and obstacles, they begin to work for our good in a greater way. Amen. And I, and I love that. In fact, the Lord, um, you know, one of my scriptures this season has been Psalms 25, 14 out of the Passions Translation. And it says, there's a secret place reserved for the lovers of God who sit near him and he reveals his secrets and his promises and revelations to them. Um, in fact, the Lord's been, you know, the, my my message this season has been about really just getting back to the intimacy of the father. Um, I think the church is fat on prophetic words. I just said that. Um, so we don't need any more prophetic words 
words. I, I mean, many people don't need any more prophetic words. They need to steward the words that they've already had. Um, but many people don't need another prophetic word. They need an encounter with the living God. They don't need another healing miracle service. They didn't encounter with a healer. I mean, who knows better what they need than the one who created them and formed them in their mother's womb. And so really that's been my heart, uh, just as you were saying at the beginning, is really just to bring people to a place of intimacy with the Father, that they know that they are truly loved and that they're awakened within their spirits to know that they're a son or a daughter of the Most High God and that they're no longer walking uh, beneath what God's called them to. Uh, we need to remember as children of God that the kingdom is not limited. Therefore, we are not limited, you know, and so really that's just been my heart to just kind of get people back to that place of, hey, God loves you. He's not mad at you, but it's time to come back. It's time to reprioritize your life. Absolutely. Absolutely. And very early on, the Lord challenged me. He, he spoke to me one. It was December of one year. He said, I want you to do a healing and miracle meeting. And I said, do what? Now we had seen healings, we had seen deliverances, but to actually put it on a flyer and to invite people and tell people that God's going to heal you and work miracles. It was a big stretch for me and my wife. We were only been uh, pastoring for a short period of time. And so I said, I'm going to call the meeting, but I'm not going to really market it or put the word out, but I'm going to call it. I'm going to put like one flight And the building was packed when we showed up uh, like New Year's the day after New Year's. And God did great healings and miracles. And we began to do these healing and miracle meetings. But at some point, the Lord said, I want you to now change it and focus more on my presence. And so we began wow. to brand these conferences called Perusia, which means the presencing of the Lord, which wow. means the abiding of the Lord. And so the focus wasn't so much the healing and miracles or deliverances or getting a prophetic word, even though those things happen. It was we're bringing people into an atmosphere Come on. of faith end of his presence where they can now be pushed. They just need that little nudge, that little heart of judgment sometimes so they can get into that next place in his presence. And they'll, they'll lift their hands and find out, hey, I've been healed or hey, I've been delivered or hey, this thing that I've been struggling with has been taken from me. But it's powerful where you can push people to have that encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ and with the spirit of God is very transformational. Amen. Amen. And that's what that's really what people need. And, and I think we've gotten to a place, at least I hope for the majority, I think I've seen where many uh, of the people in the church, they're tired of church as usual. Um, and I've seen so many blessings come from this whole pandemic. You know, it's really shaken the church to its core. Uh, it's caused us to get out of our boxes, caused us to think differently, to expand our borders. Um, and so I really think that this is challenging a lot of people and really in their beliefs as well. Um, and their dependency on their pastors or their leaders, um, but really just to get into the presence of God and begin to seek him for what they need during this time. It's just, uh, you know, and, and the, the Lord has also been sharing, you know, this was a season of consecration of really just beginning to fast and to pray and to seek his heart. In fact, I, you know, I'm a, an instructor at a Bible college and I always tell my students, you know, don't ever make a permanent decision based on a temporary emotion. And make sure that you're always that you fast anytime I have like a big event or a life changing event. If I mean, if you're moving, getting married, whatever, of course, you should definitely should be fasting about that. But to fast and to seek the father's heart regarding your whatever it is. Um, I don't do anything unless I seek the father's heart first, because, I, you know, the, the flesh is weak, um, you know, and even the, the word tells us. You know, uh, the heart is deceitful above all things. Who can know it? Right. And so yeah. the world will tell you, follow your heart, follow your heart. Friends, let me tell you something. The world will tell you that. But nowhere in the Bible does it tell you that. In fact, it tells you not to follow your heart. It says follow Jesus <laughs> because your flesh will get in the way every single time. So really, this is a season of, you know, even taking communion. And a lot of people, you know, the Lord's been having me teach on communion as well, because that's, I think, a missing um, a tool, a, a missing power tool is what I want to call it in the arsenal of God and what we have. And so, yeah, I'm just excited about equipping believers in this season and, and trying to get them to the next level. Amen. And you said something about communion. It just brought me back. And, you know, I've been taking communion since I, I got saved at a very young age. I think I was saved at four years old. And one day I was in prayer in my mid twenties and the Lord said to me, most of the church does not know the real power of communion. And I said, wow, you know, and he said, I wanted to take communion this evening. So I left from my prayer chair, went downstairs, got communion. And when I took it that evening, I literally felt the spirit of the Lord come upon me. And he began to talk to me how it's become ritualistic and routine for many. But when we take that communion, one of the things that we overlook sometimes, it says to examine yourself, to see if you're in the faith. That is not just a ritual. It should be a process where we before we even take the communion, before we even break bread and, and take of the wine, which is the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, we have an examination of our faith. And if we're not walking in faith, we should abstain from the communion 
and begin to uh, repent and go before the Lord. And if you need to fast the day or if you need to get in the word and until you get to that place where you're in the faith. Now, when you take the communion, you're taking it in faith, not out of ritual, not out of fear, not out of doubt. You're taking it in faith. And I believe there's physical healings that take place Amen. in people's bodies. I believe there's healings that take place in people's soul. It says the Lord is a restorer of my soul. And so for many people, they're going to find uh, if they actually, and I used to do this as well when I was single, I would have a date night with the Lord. Set the table, extra plate, wow. extra, extra cup, and you know, give them put some food. Now nah, I didn't expect him to eat the food, but you know, I would have an evening with the Lord, and I would talk to the Lord during the evening, and as if He was right there with me in the house, and I would take communion. And I remember, you know, sometimes it felt a little disappointing because, you you know, you think like something supernatural is going to happen. But there were several times that the Lord really blew me away. Maybe not that night, but very soon he honored just taking that time out to have communion, common union, common yeah. fellowship, come into commonality and oneness with the Lord. Amen. And I want to share, too, one of the things that the Lord reveals to me. And like you were talking about that religious spirit, that uh, legalistic, you know, that we well, it's only for leaders or it's only at Christmas time or Easter or whatever. But it's I think it's something that you can take daily. In fact, I want to encourage all of you as well um, that you can, you know, take partake on behalf of your family members as well. Sick loved ones, you know, unsaved loved ones. You can take that on behalf of them as well. But also one of the things that was so powerful that the Lord revealed to me was that, you know, it, it, in the Bible, it was very very, um, it was very important to the Jewish people who they ate with. It was very, very important who they ate with. And so they didn't just, they didn't just have food within, they didn't just break bread with anyone. And so that's why they were so upset with Jesus because he was willing to eat with the sinners. He was willing to eat with those that, um, they felt were not worthy. And so, you know, the Lord reminded me that, you know, we need to, we need to be in a place when we begin to start taking communion, we need to understand that it's an intimacy with the father. And we need to come with a heart of expectation that believes that God is going to show up when we take it. Why? And I've used this example because God is inviting you to partake with him. And it's just as if I were to say, hey, DeMonte, why don't you and your wife, um, you know, come over to my home? My family will make will make dinner for you. I'm the host. And you're like, great. We'll be there. Be there at seven. And then you come to my house and I'm not here. How rude would that be? Right. So we need to think about that. Like with Jesus, Jesus is inviting you. He's the host. He's inviting you to partake with him. And then he's not going to show up. No, it's not like that. So we need to come with a spirit of expectation, believing that he is with you and he is partaking with you at that time. And he's calling you for such a time as this. Yes, definitely. And, and not just communion, but even in our prayer time and yes. even our, our time with the Lord, I just thought about one woman of God, God healed her. And she said, God, if you heal me, I'll meet you out at the, the tree in front of my house every morning that I think it was 9 a.m. Or, or 6 a.m. I forgot the time. And she went out for 30 or 40 years to that tree wow. and prayed. And, and her name was Mother Dabney. She was with the Church of God in Christ. And this old, older, oh God, old lady, she's went on with the Lord now. But in her 70s and 80s, Amalans would be bringing people with canes and crutches and, and stretchers, and they would be getting healed and delivered and set free, free. And she really revealed Jesus Christ to people in a true and living way because she she had that intimacy and consistency with the Lord. And that's another thing about intimacy. I don't care if you've been married. Your wife, you know, my wife doesn't care. I've been married 10 years or 20 years. I can't say, well, we've been married 20 years. I can annoy you for five or six days during the week. I have to be consistent. And communication. I have to be consistent and in, in touch and feeling. I have to be consistent and you know acts of service. And it's not going to work saying, "Well, I've been serving the Lord for thirty years. The Lord will be okay if I only show up once every week or two weeks." We have to be diligent in our relationship with the Lord, just like you cultivate a relationship with a person, yes. uh, whether male or female. We have to be just as diligent, consistent, and intentional about understanding the Lord's love language. I yes. remember singing songs to the Lord. One time, the Lord told me, "I don't like that song." And he said, I don't like that. I heard it very clear. He said, and I thought I was, I, I can't sing that well, but I thought I was doing a wonderful job worshiping the Lord. He said, I don't like this song. And I changed the tune. When I changed the tune, I felt the presence come in immediately. Wow. All, you know, so we, we have to get in, even to this place of maturity in our relationship where we understand the love language that the Lord enjoys and, and the conversations that the Lord enjoys. Sometimes we have this prayer list and we're going down one, two, three. And sometimes the Lord doesn't want to talk about any of that. He wants to talk about just be quiet and let me just whisper to you and talk to you and, and minister to you and, and love back on you. And so we need to learn how to be fluid with our relationship with the Lord. 
Amen. In fact, you know, and I know this is truly the Father's heart because, you know, it's the same message really coming uh, from you that I've been speaking as well, you know, uh, getting to a place of maturity. And I always tell people, you know, you're as close to God as you choose to be. You are as absolutely as close to God as you choose to be. So any person that you may admire that has an anointing or is walking in the fullness of God, there's a price to pay for that. Uh, there's a price to pay for, you know, the, the time invested in the consecration um, and just the intimacy with the father. But really, if we think about it, when you're going to church, if you were to only eat once a week, uh, you know, in the natural, you would be physically malnourished. And that's what the, many of the church people are, is that they're, they've gone to church once or twice a week and they're spiritually malnourished. We're, and I'm going to get me on a pedestal here when I talk about the sugar coated gospel that we're being fed a fast food diet. Right. Because we're like, hey, we got a three point sermon. Let's hurry up. We got lunch, you know. And so um, I know there's a lot of really healthy churches out there, but there's also a lot of ones that I feel like have been a disservice to the body because they're not equipping them. Uh, and that's why there's a lot of scared people right now. I really feel like because they've not been equipped, they've not been taught about the powers of communion and fasting and spiritual warfare. You know, they're not prepared uh, and they've not been taught to search the scriptures for themselves. You know, in fact, the Lord told me, he said, Gypsy, you're, there's some things you're going to have to unlearn. And I said, what do you mean? And he said, you're, there's things that I've been indoctrinated with when we go from different churches or whatever, however we're raised. There's many times that we're indoctrinated with beliefs that aren't even the father's heart or they're not even scriptural. You know, and so there's a there's a place we have to get to where we say, you know, I need to take responsibility for my own life and I need to start making that choice whether I'm going to move forward or not and be intentional. I feel like that's the word this season, being intentional about our relationship with Jesus. Yes, you said something that I, as you were talking, I was just tracking and tracing with you in the spirit. But there are many ministries that are great ministries, powerful ministries, Bible based ministries. But one of the challenges now are the watered down ministries mm -hmm. that their, their motivation is not to mature sons and daughters and bring them into a place of spiritual inheritance. They entertain people and tickle their ears with just program after program with lights and cameras and actions. They right. do all of these things that are substitute for the presence of God and intimacy with God. And it does lead people that when real challenges and hardships present themselves, they're not grounded because they haven't searched out the Lord for themselves. And so I want to encourage people to get planted at a Bible believing spirit filled ministry that teaches not only the word of God, but teaches it in faith. Yes. I remember going, the first church I went to that taught faith, I mean, really taught faith, I felt boldness come upon me. I felt timidity leave me. I remember situations where it was either God showed up or I was going to be in trouble. I took back what I heard from that preacher. And I began to use that word and I saw the word work for myself. And so I believe that's a great foundation that no matter where you're at, you don't have to wait on the pastor. You can learn how to use the word for yourself. So thank you for that great insight. Yeah, absolutely. Amen. And I, like I said, I feel like that that's the father's heart really is that, um, you know, and, and what I've been teaching as well with my students is this, is that we need to understand that the scribes were inspired. So the people who wrote the Bible were actually inspired by the Holy Spirit. So they had the Holy Spirit within them when they were writing the word of God. So we need to understand that that's why there's, because I used to ask God, how, why is there so many different beliefs? Why are there so many different denominations? And they said, because they don't have my spirit. And so we need to understand that that it's only through the Holy Spirit that we receive the revelation in the Father's heart. So that's why there's so many different religions and so many different denominations, because in order to interpret the Bible correctly, you must have the Holy Spirit within you to know the Father's heart. And that's why, you know, man will look through, uh, you know, interpret the Bible through their own eyes, through their own experiences, through their own uh, understanding. And then they will they will give you that message. And many people are in religious legalistic bondage because they've they've been indoctrinated by this wrong mindset. And so we need to understand and truly to understand the father's heart regarding the scriptures, you must have the Holy spirit. I believe. Yeah, I, I believe that as well. I was having a conversation with a young man last night. He got out of the gang life and street life. And, and I had assigned him to minister to another young man that was tied up in gang activity. He said, you know, I'm trying to explain some things to him, but he, I just need to pray that he gets the Holy spirit yes. He says, until he gets the Holy spirit. It's going to be difficult to get these concepts over to him. And, you know, it's, <laughs> so he's the spirit of truth. And I believe that we're blinded to certain truths until we get the spirit of truth. He's the embodiment and the person of truth. And so when you get the Holy Spirit, it just takes your your spiritual life to another level. 
And then as well, as you begin to walk with the Lord and submit yourself and surrender to the Lord and he begins to work in you, not only does he live in you, he can be upon you. And then that's when it gets really fun and you begin to dominate against the kingdom of darkness and really see the manifestation of God's glory show up through your life. Amen. So now you're not only just with the Lord, but you're also you're demonstrating the kingdom. You're demonstrating his power, um, not just talking about his power, but you're actually walking in and, um, you know, uh, showing that as an example to the world. And that's what we've been called to. We need to remember that as children of God, that we are in the father's business. You think about it in the natural when we have, if you're a business owner, you have a family business, you know, everybody has a part. There's a, you know, let's just say you have a, a shop, you know, there's a cashier, there's a soccer, there's somebody that we all have a part. We're in the family's business. And so we need to, I feel like we really need to start looking at it from that perspective that we're in the father's business. We're all call, called to an assignment. Um, we've all been given a sphere of influence. And so I just want to encourage all of you that are listening, uh, you know, who may be struggling with uh, what's God's calling you to do. And I'm, I'm just going to really keep it simple for you. Many people will say, you know, what's my calling? What's my purpose? And I'm going to tell every single one of you, it's the same for all of us. The number one thing, your number one purpose is to know him. That's your number one purpose. Your purpose in life is to know him and to be known by him. Once you get that part right, then everything else comes to play. So that's why it says, you know, when you keep the kingdom first, all these other things will be added unto you. So I want to encourage you that every single one of you have an assignment. If you're under the sound of my voice right now, you have an assignment. God has given you something specific that you are to do. You have been given a sphere of influence. And just as I had mentioned yesterday, uh, we need to remember that just because you don't, we, not to compare your gift, with anyone else, your anointing with anyone else, stay in your lane because we need to understand that the thief of joy is comparison. And with that will come, if you're just because you don't uh, sweat and spit and, <laughs> and yell when you're ministering does not mean you're not anointed. We need to get no. that straight. We need to understand that if you are soft spoken, be okay with who you are because God has called you to a specific sphere of people who don't like to be yelled at. You know, and so that really was an eye opener for me when I realized I didn't need to be like anyone else. I was just going to stay in my own lane. And it's been just amazing what God's done when I've just said, OK, I'm going to be me and, you know, uh, and, and do what God's called me to do. Yes. And you know what? You're good enough. You're good enough for your assignment. Everyone, there's people that I can reach that you can't reach and people you can reach. I can't reach and people that some of the people listen to, they can reach that. They wouldn't like us at all, but they'll love the people that's listening. And Tuesday night, I talked on growing up in the prophetic part one and number my number two point was the sin of comparison that wow. you actually get into sin when you begin to compare because it's going to cause discouragement. It's going to cause doubt and what God is doing with you. And then it can it can push you to actually get in the flesh and do things out of competition. Wow, and uh, that's good. as you talk about yelling and screaming, you know, I've been places where they expect, especially African-American preachers to hoop and holler and sweat and then throw, throw their towel. And I was, on the, <laughs> I was on the platform one time with, <laughs> with five preachers and I was number four. And all of them, man, these guys could go. They they were anointed for their assignment. They, I mean, they spit, they ho hollered, they jumped up and down. One guy went under the pulpit three times. Wow. Them, and I, I'm like, you know, I have more of a teaching type of flow and dynamic. And so I had to get up behind all of these guys that did like this great, traumatic thing. Yeah. And a part of me is like, you know what? I'm going to get up here and, and go for it too. Even though that's not my style. And the Lord said, just be yourself. I went up so relaxed and so cool. But when I, when I finished, one of the preachers shook my hand and he said, I appreciate that you just were yourself. I appreciate that you were not afraid to be different. And even in the difference, sometimes people see authenticity. Yes. And being yourself, people see authenticity because if you're trying to be someone else, it's going to turn people off because it's, it's not genuine. And then as well, the spirit of truth will not be able to manifest in your life in its, in his fullness because you're not operating in truth. Amen. And that is so good. In fact, you know, one of the things that have kept people in bondage uh, is fear and intimidation. And I know that that was a big struggle that I had. In fact, that was my number one struggle was fear um, because I was like, and I told God, just as many of you guys know, my testimony were, um, hey, baby, my my baby boy right there. I love you. Um, and so uh, I was so fearful of being in front of the camera because I was like, well, what if I spit when I'm talking? What if I dribble water down my chin when I'm talking? What if I forget about what I'm going to say when I'm talking? I kid you not. Every single one of those things has happened. In fact, I even had an eyelash come off in one of my broadcasts. I don't even normally wear fake eyelashes, but for whatever reason, I decided that day, total amateur 
And it like came <laughs> off right in the middle of, a, of my broadcast. But I just had to laugh and be real. And so I love the fact that I, I feel comfortable enough in my own skin. It's let me just tell you guys, seriously, like once you get to a certain age, you don't even worry about what people think anymore. Like it's amazing. And so I've got reached this place now where I'm just trying to be authentically me. And when you are authentically you, friends, listen, you give other people permission to be themselves. And so that's what we need to remember. So when you are yourself completely true to who you are, then everyone else around you will feel comfortable enough to want to be themselves as well. Absolutely. It, it, it encourages people. It emboldens people. And then sometimes, too, people are looking for the person. When I said the person, there is, you know, in our spiritual DAA, God has programmed us that when we see certain leaders or ministries, something just jumps in our spirit like that's the ministry I'm supposed to follow. That's the ministry mm -hmm. I'm supposed to model. That's the ministry that I'm supposed to get these takeaways from. And, you know, I've heard hundreds of preachers when I was in my 20s, but one day I was at home and I turned to this channel, I heard this one man and it was something about the way that he spoke and how he really believed the word and how he had such boldness and confidence and how he spoke about the Holy Spirit as if he really knew him. I, I just like, I, I couldn't get enough of his ministry. I ended up joining his church and finding his church and it was life changing for me. So yeah. as well, when you become yourself, you also become Mac, the people that are assigned to you mm -hmm. to, to help your ministry, but also to be advanced by your ministry into their assignment, they become magnetized to your to your assignment, to your life and to your calling. Amen. And that's exactly right. And that's what I found in my own ministry recently is that, you know, the people and that's the thing we need to remember that we're not going to be everybody's cup of tea. In fact, I've tried to encourage, you know, many of my students who get discouraged is this. It's that, you know, you can be the sweetest, juiciest peach on the tree and there will still be somebody who doesn't like peaches. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like that's just the real stuff. And so we're not going to be for everyone and we need to be okay with that and just focus on the people that god has given us and not to get discouraged because i mean i've been called it's so funny because um you know i've said before um i've been called everything but a white woman before and i mentioned <laughs> one of my co-workers is af actually african-american and, and he was actually the first one to say okay hey white woman and i was like okay now i officially have been called everything <laughs> you know and so it was just kind of a little joke but really when you start stepping into ministry you're going to get a lot of opposition and i feel like really there's somebody here that the lord is beginning to call you out into ministry um, but let me let me encourage you with this your first covenant is to the father your very first covenant is to the father. It's not to your spouse. I know that's going to kind of freak some people out. It's not to your spouse. It's not to your children, but your very first covenant is to the father. And when he begins to call you, when he begins, he will, if you will plan, he will make a way for you. If you will begin to plan, God will make a way for you to do exactly what you're called to do. But don't get discouraged because honestly, some of the most critical people in my life were friends and family members. They were the ones who were the, the, you know, I do have a lot of support with friends and family, but uh, truth be told, I have so many more um, friends and followers that I've never even met before who have been my biggest cheerleaders, you know, so we need to understand that your, your family is going to be uh, naturally one of the people who are going to give you the most opposition. And if you think about it, if you were the enemy, who would you use? The people closest to you, because if some, you know, schmo would have come up to me and start calling me a bunch of names, I'd be like, who are you? You know, but if a family member were to tell me that it would break my heart. And so we need we need to get to a place where we say, you know, what, God, no matter what, no matter what opposition I get, I don't care what my family members say. I don't care what my friends say. I'm going to be uh, obedient and do exactly what you've called me to do. Yes. And it's biblical as well. It says the servant is not greater than the master. It said Jesus, his family, his brother and did not believe on him. You know, uh, James, the apostle didn't really believe on Jesus until towards the end of his ministry. And after he was raised up and they ridiculed him, they said, why don't you stop these things that you're doing and these crazy things that you're saying? Because if the enemy can get to those nearest to you, he can like poke you in the side and poke you in the back. And it affects you in a different type of way. But as well, it's to our benefit because <laughs> it purifies our motives. When you get persecuted, yes. when you get people that are not celebrating you and not happy with you. You have to make a decision if you're going to continue doing what God called you to do. And if you're going to continue doing it the way that he called you to do it. And so now it's this purification of the motivation of our heart. Yes. And so, I believe, yeah, so I believe it helps to develop long suffering, helps develop our love walk, helps develop us into the next level of character and fruitfulness so that now God can put a greater anointing upon us. Mm -hmm. And then something happens where those that were against us, 
now somehow come full circle and begin to support us and be on our side. It says when a man weighs or woman weighs, please God, he can make his enemies be at peace with him. And you know what's amazing too is we need to remember that everyone is watching. And I know it's big brother stuff, but really you are being watched constantly. Um, so what you what you do um, is speaking louder than what you're saying. And so I remember, you know, um, but we need to remember that we're setting an example for our family members as well. In fact, I've had a consecrated lifestyle for a while of fasting um, and I've actually gotten family members. In fact, my spouse for the first time had decided to start fasting and he'd never done that before in his life. And so it, it was only by the Holy Spirit, but it was after several years of him seeing me do it. But then the fruit that came from it is well and they would you know they would tease me and kind of mock me and kind of give me a hard time about it you know because I would make food for them and then you know my kids and and then they would eat and I would go somewhere else you know or something like that but um, or they would go somewhere to eat and then I wouldn't eat. So we need to remember that we're setting an example for others. So what you're doing, people are actually watching. In fact, um, you know, I, I've had family members actually sit and have roundtable discussions about what a hypocrite I was and really just crucify me. But then those same people years later have come back and I'm the one that they want to pray for them. So when they're coming into a hard place, they're like, hey, can you pray for me? Hey, my marriage is struggling. Can you pray for me? My kid's gone astray. Can you pray for me? And so we need to remember that no matter what happens, we are still being an example to our family members. Yes. And you know what? I, I told someone that yesterday, I said, somehow, some way people will fan you out when they're in hard places and hardships. Maybe they never supported you. Maybe they were against you, yes. but in their heart of hearts, they know who's truly, truly real and who's truly working with the Lord, yes. and who's truly connected to the Lord. And so sometimes it's a jealousy, I believe, because these are people that should have yes. paid the price that you paid. And so they sometimes right. they become envious and jealous because they see that you're doing what they should be doing and that you're reaping a harvest that they should be reaping, but they were dis disobedience. And so now it reminds them of their own lack and disobedience and failure. And so <laughs> the Lord- Yeah, that's 100% true right there. Yeah, definitely. But um, that's, that's very powerful that it's almost redemptive that those that were against you now have to come to you just like Joseph's brother and they sold him to slavery, but now they had to come to him for help. There was a young lady in our ministry and she's a prophetess herself that, uh, you know, she wrote a letter to me and it was a very accusatory letter, very derogatory. And, you know, she spoke some things that were not positive. And I was like, where is this coming from? And so anyway, she kind of separated. And what happened for about 18 months, she had a hunchback where she couldn't stand up straight. Do you know who the Lord sent to pray for her? And then she received an instantaneous healing that we actually have on video. The wow. same person that she wrote the letter to with the accusations and we're fine and we're good and we're dandy today, but I don't even think about what happened. God just took care of it that way. So it's a redemptive element where even those that were uh, against us or stabbing us in the back, now they come to partake of what the Lord's done in our life. Amen. Amen. And it's so important to, and I love that. And it's so important too to realize that not everyone is going to see the anointing on your life. Not everyone's going to see the call of God on your life if they're not walking with this in order in order for us to have wisdom or understanding or to be enlightened. We have to have the Holy Spirit. Many of our family members don't have that. So they're not going to see the call of God. Only another uh, person filled with the Holy Spirit is going to recognize that gift on you and in you and what God's doing. And so we need to understand that um, we can't judge them based on what they don't know. Right. And so even God doesn't judge us based on what we don't know. It's based on what we do know. And so many people are not enlightened yet. And so we just continue to pray for them. And so I, I really also feel it led to encourage all of you. Don't ever give up praying for your family members um, because God can do amazing, incredible things. And even the hardest hearts can be softened. And I've you know prayed for years for family members like, Lord, just so open the eyes of their heart. You know, just like Elijah, open the eyes of his heart so that he may see so that they can begin to see. And then uh in the natural, what God is doing in the supernatural, begin to see what God's doing in the spirit. But uh, they all need, many of them really need to be enlightened. And so I, I just feel led that there's many of you that are just really stepping into ministry. Now God's calling you, um, but he's calling you for such a time as this. And it's really, it's now, it's it's time to, now it's time to do exactly what God's called you to do. As I've said before, you know, this is not a boat hugging season. This is a water walking season. This is a season that God's asking you to step out in faith. He's asking you to trust him. And he's saying, will you give me your yes? Many of you are waiting on God and God is saying, I'm waiting on you. And I want to give this quick analogy. I know you have to go in a few minutes, right? 
Yeah, 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 definitely, yeah. Okay, so I'll just give this quick analogy, um, you know, and I've shared this before, but I want you guys to catch this. Many of you are waiting on God and God's waiting on you. There's these automatic doors. When you're a child or a, a son of the most, a daughter or son of the most high God, there's automatic doors that open for you, but you have to step out in obedience. And it's just like when you get ready to walk up to Walmart or Target, there's these automatic doors that open. Many of you are standing there waiting for the door greeter to open the door for you. It doesn't work like that. The door reader's not there till you get to the other side. But there's a place we need to understand that. So these automatic doors will open, but there's a place that you can stand just so far back. There's a threshold. Come on, somebody. There's a threshold that is just so far back that you can stand there and not go forward and the doors will not open. It's not until you press in and you walk past that threshold that the doors will automatically open for you. So that's how faith works. As you start moving your feet and God will open the doors for you. But many of you are standing there. And as you were speaking about it earlier, many of you are standing there. Just imagine you're standing in front of Walmart, these automatic doors, and you're standing just so far back behind the threshold, but you're seeing all these people walk through the doors. And you're like, God, but how come you're blessing them? And God, how come you're giving them favor? And God, how come you're healing them? Because they chose to give God their yes. They had faith and they moved their feet. And for someone right now, how much more confirmation do you need? It's time. It is time to start moving your feet and doing exactly what God's called you to do. If he told you, you know, 2020 has not taken God by surprise. If he told you in 2020, I want you to write a book. He still means it. If he told you in 2020, I want you to open a business. He still means it. So friends, it is time to start moving your feet. Um, Apostle Demonte, do you have uh, any last words or encouragement or anything for anyone? Because I know you need to go here in a minute. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I would just like to say, I just thought about one time this lady told me, she said, how come every time a prophet gives me a word, they give me the same word? I said, because you have not fulfilled the word. So the Lord keeps bringing the same word to you. Right. Get anything new. If you haven't done what he's already told you to do. But I have an encouraging word for you as I was listening to you and watching. The Lord just showed me in a vision. I saw you and I don't know where you're at, but I literally saw Houston, Texas, and I saw you on the face there. And so the Lord said that there's going to be a major door and platform open to you in Houston, Texas. And the Lord also says, prepare yourself for uh, just some major connections. People that you watched and admire from a distance that you never thought you would even rub shoulders with. They're going to find out about your name and your ministry and they're going to take a liking to you. The Lord also says, prepare yourself for radio and television because I see you on television with your own TV program. So the Lord says, I will bring the sponsors, I will bring the backers and I will bring the divine timing. The Lord says as well, there will be a major platform that will present itself, but it will be a mirage because the people that will try to, I want to say, uh, manipulate you. And so be cautious of that as uh, you have the father's heart and your desires to be at his will and be at his purpose. And as I'm looking at you, the Lord showed me the nation of Canada. I see a door to Canada. So <laughs> your visa and your passport, as the Lord sends you into Canada, there should come upon you a spirit of boldness and a, a strong anointing that you've not walked in before. And it's going to be to rebuke and deal with the spiritual lethargy and also the spiritual cowardice because he showed me and i don't know if you like this movie the wizard of oz i don't know if that's something you I do. Like, yeah, I like it. he showed me the cowardly lion and so it's like you're going to come in with talk about those that are righteous are as bold as a lion he's going to put a spirit of boldness on you for canada to deal with the spirit of iniquity and wickedness that's been released over that land so lord says i'm enlarging your borders i'm enlarging your territories and i'm ex uh, blowing your mind with my goodness and my mercies in jesus mighty name Whew, I want a ball right now. I can't even tell you. I'm not even kidding. And I got to tell you this really quick because many of you guys know that I've been feeling a call to Texas. I live in California and I have been yeah. feeling a call to Texas for the last five years. And my husband is finally on board with going to Texas. And I said, God, where are you taking me? And he said to Houston. And I said, God, you're going to have to make a way. I cannot. When I have an actual on my screensaver, on my computer, Houston, Texas, here I come because I felt that in my spirit and also the word that you gave. And I'm so thankful because I've been praying about getting out of here for and I thought it was going crazy. I thought it was going crazy. So thank you, Jesus. So my husband will have an opportunity, I believe, to transfer to relocate with the job that he currently does to Houston. But one last thing uh, regarding Canada, I have felt a call to Canada. In fact, many of the really great connections that I've met within the last two months have been from Canada. Uh, you know, Darren Canning and uh, Marty uh, Swanson and Nick Saray. And there's been just several others, uh, Joe uh, and 
I can't remember his last name right this second, but anyway, there's been several uh, Daniel nurses. From, from, they're all from Canada, and I've had them on my broadcast, and they've had me on their broadcast, and there's just been this kindred connection. So I completely receive that and the boldness as well because I do feel like, I'm like, God, how come you always give me the hard words to deliver? <laughs> like, how come you're always giving me the ones to – and that's the thing we need to understand, though, is that the prophetic was designed to, to activate you but also to give you instructions to do something to equip you. And so, God, my God, I'm gonna have to go back and listen to this again, Jesus. And I just wanna tell you quickly, as you said, I saw multiple doors in Canada. I saw Toronto and Quebec, different places, but the, the major place that I heard and saw was Ontario. And then also I saw, uh, uh, you're, you're not going to just go into Canada. You're going to go into that Michigan Lake Erie region as well. Lord's going to give you favor in Milwaukee and Wisconsin and Michigan. And so that it's almost like that territory in the spiritual realm. And I, I've never seen it this way before, but even though we divided as the U S and Canada, that territory in the spiritual realm is almost like one territory. You know, we have man's boundaries and man's ge geography, but in the spiritual realm, it's almost like that Michigan, Wisconsin and the part of Canada there is like one well, principality in the realm of the spirit. The Lord's going to give you authority there. He's going to give you favor there. He's going to give you doors there. He's going to give you a voice there in Jesus my name. But Houston, it was just, I just kept saying Houston, Houston, Houston. I was going to be quiet, but you said, do I have an encouraging? I said, Lord, she asked me to give her an encouraging word or prophetic. I'll do it. But other than that, I'll stay quiet. So it's going to happen. And I'm, I'm going to step out and say, I'm going, I would not be surprised if it'll be next year that you will be in Houston, Texas. I wouldn't be surprised if it'll be next fall, maybe September, October. Wow. Praise God. Well, I received that in the name of Jesus. And I will definitely keep you posted on that because like I said, God's been calling me there for about the last five years. Hey, Josh. Yeah. GDS, Texas. <laughs> that's my, that's my, the guy that's been helping me with my, um, uh, if you guys need somebody to help you with your podcasting or just, he's the, he's the tech guy. He's the guy you want to uh, hook up with, but Anyway, wow, Damonte, I so appreciate you. Uh, like I said, in fact, I, I'm just gonna have to go back and listen to that word because that completely resonated with my spirit. Um, oh, yes. Thank you so very much. It's been thank such you. an honor and a pleasure having you here today. I know that everyone has been blessed as well. Thank you, thank you. Thank you for having me and I, I well wishes to Voices of Hope and to your listeners and uh, see you in Texas or see you in Canada. Yes, sir, <laughs> God bless you. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you again. God bless you. Have an amazing, incredible day and I'll see you guys all soon.